Hey, hey everyone, welcome to this video. We are going to do an unboxing today about something I've been waiting for for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks because it just took so long to get here and I am talking about my Lomography gear. For those of you who are photo buffs, you might be a little bit familiar with Lomography. It is a subcategory of photography which generally speaking focuses on analog toy cameras or you know simple plastic cameras. It was a trend shall we say started around 1990s around that time and uh, what you really see in a lot of Instagram filters and um, you know effects and things like that the cross-processing the vignetting the um, super saturated colors the spontaneity all of that um, kind of rounds itself into the idea of Lomography so I ordered my very first camera from Lomography so I'm really really excited about this because it's one of the things I of my things to do for 2014 list and I can check another thing off of there so that's great now I will show you what is inside this box I did have a go I tried to film yesterday so um, that didn't turn out too well lighting everything just was bad so I put everything back in the box so I can show you exactly how the packaging looks like what I ordered things like that hope you guys enjoy and um, if you're into photography I think this will be a really great video so in the box which is not a very large box altogether actually um, first off you have you know all your stuffing your wrapping paper bubble wrap whatever and then we got this little piece of paper that tells me exactly what it orders so I'm going to be referencing this as we go along so I don't forget what everything is called so paper out of here and uh, we got here the camera I ordered along with some film because I'm just starting out um, into kind of film cameras. Well, I did have one a very long time ago. I believe it was an Olympus or something from the 90s. It was my parents. It was old. That's a whole different story. But uh, getting back into film um, cameras, I needed, of course, film. So I got the Lomography Color Negative, uh, 35 millimeter, of course, the 400 ISO film. Now colored negative is just the term for your regular um, colored photograph film so what you see as standard is usually called is actually called colored negative film so I got a roll a pack of three rolls in here and then I'll just show you film first because uh, they roll around in the box right here I also got three rolls of the Fuji what is this called Fuji Velvia 100 RVP 35 millimeter expired. Now you might be wondering why would you ever get expired film? I know there's nothing much to see here. Um, expired film is actually not necessarily, you know, you must toss it. It's bad film. You can't use it anymore. You can still use expired film. And if you look around, you know, Google it, whatever. Um, actually, even on Flickr, I follow a group that's. Uh, you know who shoots with expired film and they upload their photos on there and it looks quite nice actually expired film might be a little bit more experimental and of course depending on how long your film has been expired but you can definitely still use expired film and you can still get photos out of it so I'll just show you what this looks like and I believe this one is the slide film that I ordered expired slide film now slide film is a little bit different because it uses different chemicals um, to process than your regular color film so compared to these guys right here but if you do take your slide film to the regular um, photo processing store at your drugstore or whatnot sometimes they do that over here London Drugs, Costco, Shoppers Drug Mart, a whole slew of people do it very simple and they use the regular uh, chemicals they use to process the regular film but using it on slide film you can actually get cross processing and those are the really kind of saturated look and um, very I don't know just the really intensely saturated, slightly bluish, slightly orange sometimes, that type of tone that you get, you know, you're familiar with it, Instagram photos. I keep referencing that because really it's very similar to that, except you get it on a piece of paper, on a photograph. So you can actually take the slide film to your regular um, photo developing place and ask them to use the normal chemicals and process it as it would be for color negative, and then you get cross-processed photographs so maybe a little bit technical but I hope you guys understand what I mean so the main thing that I ordered and uh, which is the highlight of this entire entire order is actually this and I ordered 
after a whole lot of um, searching and debating and everything like that, the Lamography Diana Mini. And I have it in white right here, the um, package with the flash and um, the whole set right here. You can buy the Diana Mini in the single form, so just with the camera body and whatnot without the flash. But here's the catch. I realized if I just bought the camera by itself, it was $69 Canadian. If I bought the flash separately, because who knows, maybe I want a flash in the future, that would be an extra $60 to get the flash separately or 60 something around there. And you know what? This whole thing all together, if I just bought it in a package, was 99. So I would have saved, um, I would have to pay an extra 30 bucks if I wanted to get the, um, flash separately later on which i might do i don't know i didn't think i would need the flash but in case i wanted it here it is all together in one neat little package now the diana mini does come with many different uh limited edition designs and whatnot i chose to get the white not because i think well not only because i think it's really sleek but also because you can actually paint your plastic camera so you can paint even your dslr if you feel brave enough um it's just plastic as long as you use acrylic paint as long as you tape off any gears or switches that you don't want painted over as long as you're really careful and um, i think for the most part i have no hesitations about painting this later on if i get bored of the white so that's why i got the white color in case you're wondering so the box is actually quite a big sturdy box and yesterday when i was doing this for the first time it was so hard to open it. i struggled for so long it was kind of embarrassing but today i got it because i actually put this back together to refilm this video so what you do is you actually slide this part open so i'm gonna do that right now um maybe a little bit of pushing and shoving rather than sliding because this is a really tight fit so i'm gonna do this like that and it will come right out watch out for the lens right here and ta-da! So this comes out. So this is the camera body. And then on the bottom, you actually have a book. Now this is their um, booklet that comes with a lot of their cameras. I believe every single camera, whether you order the regular Diana, whether you order the, um, the Hoga, or you order the, what else they got? The um, LC a plus or something like that but all of their cameras i believe come with a little photo book that gives you not only some ideas about how the camera can be used but just more or less photographs from other people who've done using the camera that you order so for me it's the diana mini and you can get some inspiration from the book list so i think this is really insightful and um a nice way to introduce a product if you've never used it before so just give you a quick look at some of the photos on here. I think this is really, really fun. So it comes with this little booklet, quite sturdy, um, hardcover right here. And then we also have in here the camera gear. So we gotta slide this part out. And I gotta say, although this is a very sturdy packaging, this was way overly packaged because it took me forever to realize how to open everything. Now you take out the plastic part right here. I'm gonna do that. And then you have everybody in the box. So we've got the camera itself. This is the Diana Mini in white with the flash attached. I believe there's also some kind of adapter because there's an extra bit here, which I'm not sure what this is for. If you guys know, please let me know if you're a photo buff or you play around with the analog cameras. I believe this actually attaches to here and the flash goes on top. But um, straight out of the package, this is what it looks like right here. Now this camera again loads film, 35 millimeter, 35 millimeter for the Diana Mini. The regular Diana, I believe, shoots 120 millimeter film. 35 millimeter is just a regular old film, the standard, the most easily accessible, and that's the reason actually I picked up the Mini versus the Diana. The Diana was so cute. I gotta say, it was really chic, really cool, really cute, but. I want the mini not only because of the size, but because of the um, film that it uses, which is easier to buy, you know, regular drugstore, whatnot. Even if you don't have a camera shop near you, I can just get 35 millimeter pretty much anywhere. So that's this right here. Here's the flash. There is a um, trigger or on off button right here, something like that. The back is very simple as well. If you have been, you know, playing around with DSLRs, you'll be familiar with a lot of buttons. There really aren't that many buttons on here at all in fact this is so minimal that there's not much manual creativity i would say you can do with this camera there's not too many buttons to adjust 
it's really dead simple in a way. The click or the clicker, the trigger, shutter, whatever you want to call it, is actually right here, this part. And um, we have here on top, um, I think this rolls the film right here. So this switch, I believe, rolls the film. And on the back, we have a little switch. One side tells you that you can take the square photos and the other side gives you the option of taking half frames. Now, that's this general look at um, the camera right here. There are two settings for exposure, only two, one for sunny, one for cloudy. I don't think there is a big difference between the two, um, but again, I haven't played around with this at all, so I don't know how it works in action. So comes with a little strap, which is also plastic. This whole gear right here is plastic. We have also lodged in the back the little lens cap, which is plastic, of course. We pop this on, nice and easy. And I'll show you guys the bottom, which contains a bunch of uh, gears and switches and things like that. This one over here actually opens the back of the camera where you can put in the film. So I just turned it to the sign that says open. And then this slides this way. So you can see over here, this is where you load your film. I should have done this on a table to make this a little bit easier. Did not think ahead, did I? So you put your film right in here, slide it through there, roll, um, pull it out, wind it up, pop this back, and pop the back on and lock it back in. So again, nothing much to it really. Now, along with this, which is your camera and your light, um, and I showed you guys the attachment right here. There is also a little package. I believe these are colored gels that you can use either on your camera or with your flash. I haven't quite figured this out yet. That will alter the light. And you can get more um, purple toned photographs or citrus toned or peacock toned or whatever you want. There are different uh, slide gels right here. This is it. This is all that came in the box. I will put a link to my corresponding blog post um, for this video, which I've taken photographs of the camera, details, pricing. Um, if you're curious what exactly is Lumography and you're still a little bit confused, I'll have some sample photos from other people who've done on my blog post as well to help you guys kind of get more into it. And if you are wondering about um, how I'm gonna get along with this, if you want a further detailed review, after a couple months, after I fiddle around with it, I'll be happy to do that. Just let me know in the comments down below if you're interested in this type of thing. But it's another part of my life that I thought I ought to share with you guys because this is really kind of exciting. Oh, shipping. If you're wondering, shipping, Canada, $15. If you're ordering something big, customs will slap you with a fine. Um, you know, taxes and whatnot. Uh, for me, my total order ended up being around 140 you know, before uh, the customs. And then the, through the border, Montreal, da, 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 over here, they charge me about $30 for customs and collection fees and all of that. So just be prepared. If you're ordering something big like this, you know, from Lomography, they'll likely slap you with something. So there you go. Hope this was informative. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.